All New X-Men number 19 by Dennis Hopeless and Paco Diaz. As Idy and Evan reminisce about the end of an era upon them, Iceman's boyfriend makes fun of him for not knowing what a campground barbecue pit is. Trying to figure out how to light it, Angel flies down with wings of flame and sets fire to the entire area. They ask him where he's been the last few days, and he tells them that he's been wiping out a human trafficking ring with Wolverine up in the hills somewhere. Without warning, the Blackbird lands, and an unexpected guest walks out. Cyclops blasts an old station wagon that the hotel owner said was used for target practice when that special guest comes walking up. Jean Grey gives him a hug, and they share a moment. Cyclops laments Emma Frost starting so much trouble in his life and then escaping scot-free. He asks Jean what she's doing there, and she tells him that Hank asked her to be there for a secret meeting. He suddenly remembers that meeting invite as well, and the two go running. Beast thanks the original five for being able to gather, and he explains his recent run-in with Doctor Strange and budding use of sorcery. He tells them to close their eyes, but Jean peeks, seeing the room aglow and Hank morphing into some huge monster. When the room settles, they see they're back in Westchester in the past that they were picked from. Scott erupts in joy while the others react with disdain. Hank should have explained. He tells them that they'll all understand soon. He tells Pickles to bring them to the bank, and there they're teleported to a robbery. Eunice the Untouchable walks out. Scott tells them that he knows how to beat him now, but Hank restrains him. He tells him to wait a moment, and it'll all make sense. The original X-Men, complete in classic unis, fly out and attack. Scott is heartbroken. How can this be? Hank explains that this can't be their timeline. He pulls them back to the present, and Scott continues to not believe it. He tells Hank to bring them somewhere else, and he explains that he doesn't know where that is. Scott storms out with Jean closely in tow. Cyclops goes out to blow up the car some more, asking her, where do we go from here? She says they go forward. He moves in to kiss her, and they share an awkward moment. She explains that that wouldn't be moving forward, and he understands. They walk back to the group, where Jean quietly asks Beast what that weird morphing thing was. He tells her that it wasn't any of her business, and the team pulls out some tunes. Instead of baseball, like some other X-titles slowed down with, they have an impromptu X-Men dance party, and with that... This series comes to an end. You know, it's bittersweet to see this title wrap. I remember about 40 or 50 some odd issues or so when Uncanny X-Men ended for the first time, and this was the replacement title. But from Bendis to Hopeless, it seems like a good time to wrap this up. I've already gotten a chance to check out X-Men Blue, and if you like this team, the majority of them continue on there. I don't know what happens to ID or Kid Apocalypse, but I don't really care. Either way, this was an app send-off, and... I give this final issue an 8 out of 10. If you like this video, there's hundreds more like it spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the boxes here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdiestkidyouknow.blogspot.com or nerdiestkidyouknow.com. You can also follow my links to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, as well as a link to this very issue for sale in my eBay store by clicking below. For the Nerdiest Kid You Know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.